Thank you. Um, I'm Manuel Zamit, or Emanuel Zamit, 1M, or WM, or Lely Zamit, which is the shorter method, uh, shorter name for my name. Um, I am the Digital Literacy Director. Are you moving this? Okay, let's go back. I'm the Digital Literacy. Um, I come from the Digital Literacy Department, or as I am known for the time being, the Director for the um, uh, e-learning department, for the e-learning. So I don't know why I wouldn't go into a, an identity crisis for the time being, but um, let's, go, let, let's, let's move on. I want to speak to you about um, passion and love. Not this kind of passion, I'm actually, I'm, uh, okay. But I'll be talking about this kind of passion. A passion and love for our students, a passion and love for our profession as educators. There's a very good book by um, uh, Ken Robinson. You may um, agree with his thoughts or not, but um, he talks about this passion um, that our students can bring into our classrooms. It's called the element. Um, so it is about love of teaching, about the love of educating the whole person. And what matters to me is not the technology that has overcome and in some cases even overwhelmed our society, but what we as educators can do with, the, with this technology in order to reach further heights which are unreachable without the use of technology. So when we say that it is not the technology that drives pedagogy, but the other way around, it is exactly this that we mean. Look for the passion and love in teaching first, and understand that technology can help you reach further, achieve more. I remember two great teachers, two teachers actually, um, who taught me some almost 50 years ago when I was in my first year in secondary school. They were great mathematicians, great mathematicians. One of them made me fall in love with mathematics. The other one made me hate mathematics. Both great mathematicians. But the first one was in love with teaching. The other one, unfortunately, was in love with the subject. And I still remember one of the names, Mr. Lofaro. And he, we didn't even have a nickname for this guy, Mr. Lofaro. Yes. Um, uh, so when we say that, um, I think I should move now. Um, so it's, yes, first we must fall in love with the, with the subject, with, the, with, the, with teaching, and then move on to, 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 the, to the rest. Um, we have been speaking about connected learning. Should I be pointing that way? <laughs> we have been speaking about connected learning, which in my department's view is not um, about a particular platform or technology, but an approach to learning, an approach to understanding how learning um, operates. It is saying that for each learner, there is a kind of experience that is optimal from the learning perspective. And that is the key to what it means to thrive and grow up in a digital and networked age. We are in a critical historical moment, I believe, for a, an approach to learning that is about social connectivity, about exploration, 
discovery, inquiry-based learning that is driven by real-world problems tied to young people's interests and identity. We are seeing a tremendous opportunity in today's networked world around social connectivity, the ability to mobilize relationships and communities. This is unprecedented. This is an unprecedented opportunity connecting learning to real world engagement about having porous boundaries between the classroom and the community and the home. This is something that we try to do with our VLE to link between the home and the classroom, something which unfortunately failed in Malta. These ideas of learning and what makes good learning are not, are not new. These are not new ideas. It is just that we have been handed these tools to, um, to suddenly make these forms of progressive and powered inquiry-based learning accessible in a much more um, broad broad-based ways. We are trying to help teachers understand that if they do not offer such opportunities to our children, we will see a gap um, widening between the rich and the poor families, the rich students and the well-off students. And the, and, the, and the underprivileged. Families who are educated and well-off recognize that learning that is focused on interest and enrichment out of school learning, drama, ballet, music, art, and now robotics classes, those are two examples from um, our local papers, and you can find them on the internet as well. Um, we are having private lessons for robotics now as well. But anyway, um, that make, that they, they, do, they do make productive use of, of uh, new technology. That these are the ways that kids are really going to get ahead. This is what the, the, the perception is out, out, out there. And they are going outside the public infrastructure, outside our public schools, our state schools, in order to access this additional advantage. The tragic thing is that this differentiation, this inequ inequity is expanding at a period when technology actually allows much broader access. There is nothing from a resourcing point of view that is keeping kids from accessing these opportunities online, especially in Malta. We have interactive whiteboards in each classroom which are being replaced by um, interactive um, uh, flat panels now, a VLE, online digital resources, flow robots, robotic kits, 3D printers, and we just rolled out around 6,000 tablets um, for all year four students just a few days ago. Although I know of many teachers who have taken up the challenge, I constantly ask myself how many more still need to understand that digital literacy is a student's entitlement. If we are failing in Malta, it is a failure of will rather than resources. And we only have ourselves to blame if we do not take hold of this opportunity. Um, we believe that the most meaningful and resilient forms of learning happen when a learner has a personal interest or passion that they are pursuing in a context of culture affinity, social support, and shared purpose, which is at the heart of connected learning. This is one of the principles that guides my department, that guides our department for digital literacy in Malta. So what are we doing? In 2015, we published a document to make our educators aware um, of what we mean by digital literacy. Actually, it, um, the document specifies that it should be understood as digital literacies. 
again, um, an identity crisis perhaps. Um, but the idea is to keep in line with the learning outcomes framework that describes digital lit literacy. Um, the document gives an overview of different definitions of the digital literacy, which depend on the audience um, they are intended for and the background of the author um, who proposed them. While each of these definitions is valued and weaved into a comprehensive view of 21st century learner, the required fundamental competences emerge and are highlighted in this document. With this document in the background, we are focusing on pedagogy. Pedagogy is our main focus, and I've been telling parents that although we have an, rolled out numerous tablets, the tablets will not make any difference in our schools. It is the teacher in, in, in collaboration with the parents and together with the children who will make the difference. It is not the hardware that will make the difference. So, um, yes, we are um, focusing on difference. So, um, yes, we are um, focusing on pedagogy and placing great emphasis on the seven C's. Um, I don't know, I don't remember if it was on Monday or Tuesday, last Monday or, or Tuesday, when one of the speakers mentioned the six C's. I would have liked to add the seventh one, which we do in our, in our case. Um, it's collaboration, communication, creativity, critical thinking, digital citizenship, coding, and character education. The coding or computational thinking, which is slightly different, but we're um, looking at this, this area, um, was missing from the six C's that, that was mentioned um, on Monday or Tuesday. Um, so, yes, this document highlights our mission. This was published almost a year ago. Um, it highlights a couple of, of, uh, of ideas. Number one, to have educators, we are, we, we are um, uh, it's part of our mission to make uh, educators shift from the traditional way of teaching to a 21st century learning environment where digital, digital literacy is a learner's entitlement. We are supporting and guiding each teacher to make this shift. It is very important for us. And like someone said this morning, I believe it was, um, I don't know, remember, I don't remember her name. Um, it's, it would be a shame if we don't support the teacher because we will be um, doing a disservice to the students. So we have committed ourselves to show progressively what this environment looks like and how the 21st century competences can be achieved. So um, we, we go from um, competences to processes. Our ultimate aim is that every educator and uh, their learners become digital citizens. Another principle which has guided the Department for Digital Literacy is open learning. Open learning can be defined as we heard yesterday and uh, even a few minutes ago from Andrea, as looking at open educational resources, open practice, open leadership, and in some cases, even open assessment. But for the department, the biggest thing about uh, open learning is sharing, collaborating with others, communicating with others, sharing what you know with others, collaborating and changing the way um, you think and learn as a result of your interactions with these people. We see open learning as dealing with what the learners want, when they want it and where they want it, anytime, anywhere, you know, at a pace that suits their needs. So last year we published another policy document which should guide schools in developing their own policy on positive behavior. I believe this is the first um, type of policy in Malta where it gives the onus to the, um, to the schools rather than telling them what to do, we are just giving them a framework where they can 
um, develop and draft their own, their own policy. The policy goes, um, uh, the policy is about uh, positive behavior in, a, in an online environment. And the policy goes into details on various aspects of online safety, such as the use of email, social media, bring your own device, cyberbullying, data protection, and uh, copyright issues. These two documents, this one and the one before it, will be wrapped up in a national digital strategy, which I hope will be issued in a few months' time, based on the EU's um, digital competences for organization framework. So we have the European framework for digital competent educational organizations and even the DigiCom for teachers, for educators. There is so much more to say, but this brings me to my last area, the one tablet per child project. Um, uh, teachers were given the tablet during their second in-service training in September, while students were given their, their tablet later on in December and the first week of January. So we rolled out around about six, just a, a little bit above 6,000 tablets. Teachers were asked to explore what they could do for themselves. They were given the opportunity to talk about what they found in an online community. And as soon as the memorandum of understanding between the government and the teachers union is signed, we will be organizing a one day seminar for all to meet face to face and share what they found, what was found. Teachers had the opportunity to try out um, uh, some features that they had practiced during their in-service training. So we have a, a group of specialized teachers who are sort of helping out these teachers in the classroom. Um, they drafted uh, a number of, of, of tasks that the teachers could practice from the first time that they got the tablet to, the, to, to, this, to December. They were around about 10 weeks. So during this time, teachers were encouraged to make regular time to share ideas in school and in their college. Um, my colleagues, who are over there, four um, education officers, um, two assistant directors, and myself, are making sure that no pressure to rush and hurry is um, exerted on the teacher. We know that when devices are brought into the classroom, there will be a lot of learning involved. For some, the incline might be a little bit steep. For others, we know of um, some teachers who already gave some homework um, on the tablets, even though it, we ask them to go slow, but you get all sorts. Um, uh, so we have been asking um, uh, teachers not to feel that they have to use the tablet for everything and all things. Something that I really emphasized. The tablet is not to be used all the time. So the tablet is a great tool. We know it is a great tool and there are a number of great ways to use it. But we are making sure that they do not use it for everything. In many cases, paper makes more sense, so we are helping teachers through continuous support to learn how to make meaningful use of the device. We are asking um, uh, teachers to follow the SAMR model, which is by Robert, um, Rupert Pantatura. This is a, a model where teachers can self-review where they are and sort of step up their, their, uh, their work. And again, we are not saying that redefinition is wrong, okay? Um, substitution is wrong. Something that I don't really like, um, which is a term used in, in our environment, is that we go for um, technology-enhanced learning. I wouldn't like to see just the enhancement, just the substitution of 
from paper to tablets, I would like to see that transformative um, use of, of tablets. So we are also um, uh, helping out, helping teachers to even flip their classroom, not every lesson, but just to try out this, this uh, way of teaching as well. My two last points. So there's, quickly, quickly, yes. Um, um, learners will have a whole scholastic year to do the paradigm shift. This will be one of the challenges that year four teachers will face as experienced during the one tablet per child pilot project. Most learners will have been used to devices as an entertainment tool. Um, uh, what the one tablet per child program will do is to force them to shift that paradigm from entertainment to productivity and to learn and to learning. They will also come to consider that devices, um, uh, that, 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 that the device is a learning and productive, productivity, productivity device. We also had um, 35 meetings with parents in, uh, two, in two months from uh, in November and December. Unfortunately, although the number um, perhaps is quite good, we had only 48% um, uh, of parents coming to our meetings. We had meetings in the mornings and in the evenings. But anyway, we, um, some schools wanted even to meet, to meet um, uh, parents above these, above these meetings. And the last, the last um, uh, slide. We know that we are going to make mistakes. Learners are going to make mistakes. Teachers are going to make mistakes. I am going to make mistakes. My department is going to make mistakes. So we have been asking all, the, all to be patient, all to be patient with each other. We must all be open to new information and open to new and good ideas from colleagues who may be further along the path than some of us. In some ways, I as director will have to model for the teacher what I want them to model for the students. I need to be, I need not be an expert um, in all aspects of this program. I have been saying to teachers that it is very powerful if we can see ourselves as learners and we role model for learning. And thank you. Great, thank you. I'll take, um, I will take one quick question to Manuel. If you want to see more, if you want to learn more Otherwise. about what we're doing, there's manuelzamid.wordpress.com, um, which has more information about uh, what we're doing with the I, tablets yeah. and the education. I have one question here at the front. Yes. The, I hope I, it's I've got a microphone coming. Yeah, Hang on, five seconds. Got it. At the point you mentioned that the VLE didn't work out, that it failed, and I don't know if you meant it more on a primary, secondary school level, but um, in tertiary education, it's quite a good tool. The only problem is that not all educators know how to use it properly. So what I'd like to stress more is maybe, I don't know if, what you meant by it failed. Okay, let me, first of all, I would, ask you uh, back another question. Was the VLE used as a learning environment or just as a content repository? But that I wouldn't know. Um, um, the university people have to answer that. For the primary and secondary schools, um, yes, for the primary, uh, we had take up of the VLE year by year. So it was progressing um, quite, for the secondary schools, um, very few people used it. The thing is, there are, there are uh, a series of, of uh, yes. reasons why they didn't use it. And I'm not going to go into uh, some of them. But mainly is, is this. Um, perhaps our first mistake was with, that we did not ask what the teachers needed. And we just imposed on them a tool which perhaps they did not really need. So um, next time round, we're trying to, we will try to um, 
correct this mistake. Great. Thanks very much, Manuel. Thank you. Thank you.